Hi guys and welcome to the part 6 of this streamlit series. So in the previous video we saw how you can add widgets to your uh, streamlit app and make your app interactive and in this video we will be seeing how you can add these widgets to the sidebar. So adding a widget to the sidebar allows you to pin the mentioned widgets on the left hand side of the screen. So this allows the users to focus on the content present in the app. So we will be seeing how this uh, sidebar can be utilized in our uh, streamlit application. So let's get started. So first of all, I have created this new script sidebar.py and imported streamlit as st and then I have imported pandas as pd. So just in case if you don't have pandas installed, you can do that by typing pip install pandas and then from matplotlib, I have imported pyplots as plt Again, if you don't have this installed in your virtual environment or on your PC, you can do that by pip install matplotlib. So next, I will be using ggplot style for my plots that we will be making in this video. And then I have defined a data dictionary which has num, then square of that numbers, then double of that numbers which has been named as twice and then uh, thrice. So I have converted this uh, dictionary to a data frame, which will we be using in this video. So we have made a virtual environment for our project. So let us first activate that. So to activate, just type your name of the virtual environment, then scripts, and then activate. This will activate our virtual environment. You can see over here. So now to add a widget to your sidebar, all you need to do is type st.sidebar and then the name of the widgets that you want to add over there. So I'll add a, uh, let's say, a select box and then the syntax remains the same for select box. So you will name this. So I'll say select a number and then pass a list as an option. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, and save this. So now we'll see how this sidebar looks. So we'll run our app, streamlit, run, and then the name of the file, and hit enter. So this will open up our streamlit app on our browser. So This is loading. So you see, this is the sidebar that we get with Streamlit app. And over here, we have added a select box over here. And this is how it works. So now let's see an practical example of how we can use this uh, sidebar. So I'll go back over here. So we would be adding a select box widget to the sidebar and taking the column name as the input and then we would be using that column name to plot our data so over here i will just change this number to select a column and instead of this list i'll say df dot columns and save this so now this df dot columns will give us the names nums square twice thrice in a form of list so then i'll save this selection in a variable called call and now we are ready to go to make a plot so i'll type plt dot plot and then over here as x-axis i'll pass df dot nums uh, sorry num and for y-axis i'll pass df and then the column that we get from the sidebar so call and save this and sorry and finally plot this on our streamlet app so sp.pyplot and if i save this and go to the app so you see so currently we are plotting nums versus nums so that's why we are getting a straight line then for square you see we get a half parabola and similarly for twice 
you can see we get uh, 8 over here for 4 and similarly for thrice if I go so this is what we get at 10 we do get 30 so this is how you can use a widget in a sidebar and except right echo and spinner all the widgets can be added to the sidebar so instead of a single column let's see how we can add multiple columns by using multi select over here so i'll say multi select and rest of those things can be set the same here so if i go over here so since we haven't selected any column that's why we are getting this error so i can say if i say nums you see we are not no longer getting that error Similarly, if I add square, so you can see we have plot for the num and then for the square. Then similarly, we can add twice and thrice. So next, we'll see how we can use this sidebar with widget as a navigation bar. So in Streamlit, we don't get the option to have multiple pages, but we can create a multiple pages looking looks by using the navigation bar uh, by sorry by using the sidebar and the widgets so let's see how we can do that so if i go back to my script now so what i'll do over here is that i'll uh, add a radio button to our sidebar so st dot sidebar dot radio button then i'll say a uh, navigation over here and then pass a list so i'll say over home and about us page about us and save this and let me just check over here so yes we do get this option so what I'll do is I'll save this uh, option that we get in a, a RAD variable and save this. Now what I'll do is go ahead and use the if RAD would be equal to home. I'll display this uh, plot and save this and if rad would be equal to sorry this should be double equal uh, equal to about us then we'll just display uh, right and display you are here in about us page and save this so now if you see this if i go to home page then again i get this option of nums and this is the home page that we have set and if i go to about us we get this so this is how you can create a multi-page feeling in your web application so that was all about how you can add widgets to your sidebar in streamlit application and how you can use this widgets and sidebar to create a navigation for your web application so now we have this small topic about displaying progress and statuses in streamlit so after this we would be ready to make our first web application using streamlit so let's just cover this small topic so streamlit provides us with a few methods that allow you to add animation to your web application so these uh, animation includes uh, progress bars status messages like a warning success or error then we also have a balloon animation that is given to us by streamlit so let's see how you can add this to your streamlit app so let's begin our discussion with the status messages that we get along with streamlit 
so we have five status messages that we get so first is sp dot error so just pass in the error that you want to show then you have st dot success and pass the message you want to uh, show in the success box so i'll say show success then we have st dot info and pass information then we have st dot exception but this needs uh, the parameter needs to be a valid exception so i'll pass run time error and this is an error and final would be a sp dot warning so this is a warning and if we save this and go to a streamlit app so this is the error box then this is the success then this is information this is the error uh, sorry exception box and this this is the warning so this is how you can add status messages to your streamlit application now next we will be seeing how you can add a progress bar in your streamlit app so so i'll just type over here so now we will be adding a pro progress bar to our streamlit app and to do that i would be requiring the time module so i'll import time over here and i'll get back to the code over here and over here i'll type proc progress is equal to st dot progress and initialize it with zero then for i in range 100 what i will do is uh, i'll make this uh, loop sleep for uh, 0 0.01 seconds so if it would be time dot sleep 0 0.1 and then i'll update the progress so progress dot progress and then i'll do is i plus one and save this so if i go over here you see this progress bar has been added to our streamlit application so similarly you can add a balloon animation over here so as soon as this about us page is uh, collected and after the loading has been done what i'll do is i'll add a balloon animation so to do that you can just type sp dot balloon and just save this so if i go here so once this is fully loaded then you will see the balloon animation that we get from streamlit so this was the balloon animation that streamlit provides us so that's all for this video and i hope this video was helpful to you so we have covered all the basics that we need to create a web application using streamlit and in the next video we will be creating our first web application about the salary predictor and yeah that's all so please do like this video and subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next video bye